In this video, we're gonna talk about an ad checklist that you can use to make sure that you're ready, that everything is set up when you're running ads, that you're gonna be able to not only measure and manage your ads and optimize those ads, but you're gonna be able to, at the end of it, be able to say, here's my most successful channels and here's how I'm going to use this data to grow your brand or your business. Let's get into today's video. Hey there, everybody. My name is Brandon Brashears. I create daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. And if you enjoy the video, be sure to comment. Let me know what you think. Is there anything I'm missing out here? Or is there any projects you're working on? We are talking about an ad checklist. I think checklists are super important because we're human, we forget things. And so it's good to have a standard operating procedure especially if you have employees in your business or if you are you know, trying to grow a digital marketing agency or if you just aren't quite sure what to do, this is gonna be really helpful for you. In the uh, links below, you can actually download this checklist. It's a PDF. You can use it and it's completely free. You just have to opt in with your email. You'll get notifications about upcoming videos and free trainings that I do here. No spam, just opt in for that list. Checklists for ads. Very important. I think that a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about here is called pre-work for your ads. And pre-work is the stuff that's not so glamorous, but it's extremely important. It helps you to determine, number one, what your return on ad spend is. Number two, what kind of uh, things are working for you. It helps you to really get clear on who is the target market that you're targeting, what is the specific offer that you're creating for these people. And it just, all of this work is so important. It's often skipped over. You know, I see so many business owners, they wanna get ads out, they wanna get offers out, they're just impatient to get things going. And as a result, they just throw stuff up and hope that it works. And what they end up seeing is that they don't get the ad spend. If you've ever said to yourself, you know what? Facebook ads don't work, or Google ads don't work, or email marketing doesn't work. The reason why that is, is probably because you haven't done the pre-work to get things set up like they need to be, okay? So this checklist is gonna help ensure that you do that every single time. Let's talk about this checklist. Item number one, I think this is probably most important. You need to develop your client persona. If you click this video up here, you're gonna see how to develop a client persona in depth, but do you know exactly who you're targeting? What's the message? What is their concerns? What is their, their interests? What are they worried about? Who is it that you're targeting? If your clients are, you know, okay, I'll take anybody who will pay me, that means you're really not targeting anyone. Digital marketing gives you the ability to get laser targeted pinpointing on demographics that you're choosing to, tar to target, people that you're choosing to work with. If you're gonna spend money to get clients, make sure that you're trying to get the best and highest quality clients possible and define that. Think about it, work on it. Client personas are so important. Number two, you need to develop the before and after grid. What does the client look like beforehand and what do they look like after using your product or service? You need to be very clear on this. This language specifically helps you with the copy of what is it that we're doing? What is it that we're producing? How does this benefit the person that we're trying to help? If you click this video up here, I go really in depth on how to create that before and after good important questions on that. And really you're gonna have all of the tools that you need to create a complete before and after grid that helps you to communicate far better with your clients and customers. Number three, we have, what is the main objective? Are we trying to go for awareness, evaluation, or conversion here? That relates to a marketing funnel. If you click this video up here, I go in depth on what is a marketing funnel. I also break down each steps of the funnel, but people have to first know about you. They have to then say, am I gonna do business with these people? If they say yes, then they convert. And that is in general how a funnel works. So there's different KPIs at each stage of the funnel. And you need to understand, okay, if I'm putting out a piece, a blog post, for example, and there's no call to action to sell things, I shouldn't expect to be having this piece of content do work that's going to create actual return on investment. With something like that, it's a top of funnel type metric. We are going to be tracking how many clicks we get, time on site, um, number of shares, number of likes, things like that, right? Make sure you are super clear. What is the objective here? What is it that we're trying to achieve? Number four is what is the offer? What is it that we're actually trying to sell here? So. If we're doing awareness, it's gonna be clicks or visits to the website. If it is uh, evaluation, we're gonna be talking about opt-ins or people downloading things or you know, stuff like that. And then conversion, maybe people starting free trials, people buying products, people buying books or services or whatever it is that you're selling. So what is that offer? 
Number five, we need to have that asset or landing page actually completed. So now that we know who it's for, what it is that we're, we're offering to these people, what the offer is, how we're gonna manage and track success, we need to have the actual asset created. Is that asset created? Do you have it ready to go? Is it live? And is it something that you can use? Typically, I like to have a single piece of content that I'm promoting, right? I don't like to just send people to like my homepage, for example. So, so many times I see people running ads and running offers and it just takes them to the homepage. That's not what you wanna do. You wanna have a landing page for it. You wanna be selling a specific product or service. You wanna be you know, offering a solution to a specific problem that people have. Again, this goes back to knowing who your client is, what it is you're trying to achieve, and how you're going to help them get that result that they're looking for. And you know, specific landing pages or specific content pages, that really helps you to do that. So make sure you have assets created for your ad. Number six, we're gonna decide what traffic channel we're going to be using. Now this is going to depend on the asset that you're using. This is gonna depend on the client persona. This is gonna depend on the stage of the funnel that these people are in. If you're a plumber, you should probably be using Google Ads, right? You're trying to target people that have a specific intent. If you're trying to do a branding deal, like let's say you're a local restaurant and you just wanna be targeting people in a specific vicinity, maybe Instagram would be a great placement for that using geographically based ads. So it really depends on what is it that you're trying to do. Think about different ad networks as basically traffic stores that you're going to. Who is the demographic of the people that I'm trying to reach? What is the objective of this ad or this piece of content? And then what is the channel store that I can go to to buy either the engagement or the traffic that is going to best suit what my goals are and what the end result that I'm looking for is? So I hope that that makes sense. If it doesn't, be sure to comment below and let me know I can explain it more. And then number seven, you need to have pixels installed, you need to have tracking installed, and then you need to have conversion measurement tools in place. So if you're using Facebook ads, you need to have a standard conversion event pixel installed. If you're using Google ads, you need to have both Google ads and also Google Analytics installed. I like having the, the specific channel that we're running ads in, we need to have that pixel installed on the confirmation page. So make this as simple as possible. Again, this goes back to having an asset that you're using. And so like if you have a landing page, you have a very specific landing page for a specific offer, we're able to send traffic there and measure the results based on the traffic that we're sending. If you're doing you know, large scale branding campaigns, there's not as measurable type things, but the beauty of digital marketing and direct response digital marketing specifically is that we're, we have an ad, we have an objective, we're able to measure clicks and traffic and conversions and really get dialed in on what's working, what's not, who are the demographics that are working well. And if you don't have you know, pixels set up, if you don't have Google Tag Manager set up, if you don't have analytics set up, you're not gonna be able to get that data that is gonna help you to be far more successful. So I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, need help with anything, please comment below. I make daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business, be sure to subscribe here. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you on the next video.